Hey everybody, Alex here for Nerdy Inc. Coming at you with another episode of Our Favorite Frontier, the only Star Trek podcast on the internet that's hosted by me and Nick. Hi, Nick. Hi, Alex. How are you? I'm doing well. My cat is meowing. I wonder if that'll make it into the microphone or not. <laughs> she missed me because I wasn't here last night. It, uh, it 100% did. So, we're talking about the 18th episode of Season 1 called home soil. Captain's log, Stardate 41463.9. While mapping the Pleiades cluster, we have been asked by the Federation to visit a group terraforming, Valara 3. Communications have been erratic, and there is some concern about their welfare. Nick, you ugly bag of mostly water. What did you think <laughs> of home soil? Well, I felt insulted, honestly. But honestly, I was... I was very bored of the episode. Okay. It just seemed, it didn't seem like there was much like going on action wise, mm -hmm. which I mean, I haven't really seen much of TNG. I mean, it happens sometimes, but I just felt like there was just a, it was a lot of talking and explaining and it just lost my interest personally. The, uh, I will say I was shocked. I've been looking forward to discussing this episode for a while because it's one of the few that I, oh, my phone still have a, has a sound. That's the Jason sound effect that my phone is making everyone because it's halloween when we're recording this mm -hmm. um i was shocked at how much of the first 10 minutes was okay i'm gonna take a step back whoever the director of of this episode is deserves to be taken out back and shot in the head because oh dear it's a, <laughs> yeah, yeah oh yeah i got a lot to say about the direction for whatever reason gene roddenberry thought it would be a good idea to have f almost five uninterrupted minutes of one lady talking fake science. Now, all of Star Trek science is fake, let's be real, because there's no such thing as a warp drive, we currently have no way of going faster than light, antimatter engines, pro, uh, phasers, none of that's real. But the, to describe the terraforming process, which is completely fictional, was a strange decision to make, but it could work if they did it in a visually interesting way. However, they did not. There was literally a flat mid-shot mid of one lady describing the terraforming process, which I thought was, if you're trying to make an engaging show, don't do that at all. Now, admittedly, I like the fact that they thought through the science, because I like it when shows think through the science, but the presentation was dry and boring and terrible. But once you clear that hurdle, then you get to the crux of this episode, which is something that I find interesting and I struggle with at the same time, which is the idea of inorganic life. And I can't, I don't know that I can wrap my head around what inorganic life is, especially if I'm trying to figure out how is inorganic life different from artificial intelligence? Because to me, they're kind of, when you think of inorganic, obviously then you go to man-made, and if it's man-made, is it isn't that just artificial intelligence? But I like I can't wrap my head around what the these little creatures are, that live in the sand are, and I don't know if it's just because I'm dumb, or it's just such not or it's not real BS science that I shouldn't be this hung up about it. Well, I mean, I did, <clears throat> since I did, you know, find the episode very hard to understand personally, mm -hmm. I did kind of, I kind of went on Wikipedia and just kind of browsed through. And it says that they had a lot of problems with the script in general. Okay. So, I mean, maybe it wasn't really, I mean, the actor's fault for not, for delivering it so poorly because it was probably like a last minute thing that it came out that way. Um... Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I obviously we can't speak to what if that was what was the struggle, and what was not. Um, I think realistically, I mean, it'd be one thing to if it was just written boring, but I think presentation is sort of a big part of that. There was just nothing, no, you know, typically in a show, if you're gonna have someone explain a scientific process, usually it, it cuts, you know, twenty seconds into what they're saying to to like a, a voiceover, and you see it happening, or you see like a, a 
some sort of visualization of it where you use the fact that it's a visual medium to explain it to you that way in a more interesting visual and engaging way rather than feeling like you're in science class because that's what made the episode so dry was that it was literally just people talking at you about science and the science isn't real i can't stress that enough yeah so like i mean science class is interesting because it, i i mean i like science class because it was real stuff but even they had demonstrations they had the excitement of explaining things that you didn't understand this not only has no visual there's no excitement and it's not real so why do i care yeah and and, and admittedly like i was like i said before you know, all of Star Trek's science isn't real. But at least, like, if you're going to get into a story about, like, what is Data alive? Where you think think back to, like, the episode where you saw Data's brother, Lore, and it was that whole big, like, back and forth about their personality and what it means to be human and blah, blah, blah. Admittedly, that's all fake, too. But it's at least told in a visually interesting way. You're engaged. This was... It was, it was a series of just lectures, basically. Well, also with Data... He's a main character, and any chance you get to find out how he is the way he is, you're going to pay attention if it's real or fake. Mm -hmm. This is such a minute thing that's only going to be relevant for this episode, so it doesn't matter. Doesn't I, There's nothing to captivate me, because I know this is not going to be important later down the line. Well, even then, I mean, I can still get involved in, in something that's just one episode, but my, my bigger thing is it's such an abstract concept that i can't really i can't get on board with it because i don't feel like i understand it I, well I, I feel i feel the same way you do i can get i can get behind stuff if it's gonna only give me an episode and you know it's entertaining but it just it was too much to bring to the table to a casual audience member you know i'm not like the biggest sci-fi guy you know i do my kind of like very casual with my sci-fi so getting stuff like that thrown at me is not anything I'm going to be interested in. Especially the way it's done. Yeah, so it's just, it's just, uh, it was just bad writing and performing on their part. Well, I'm going to pin it on the director. And why is that? Well, because something else gave, gave, gave it away to me that the director is a hack. The director's a hack. He's a hack. Which is about halfway through the episode, they're in Picard's ready room. And, uh, the director of the facility is talking to Picard. And Picard's sitting at his desk and the director is standing up looking at Picard. They're having a bit of a heated exchange. And the director breaks the 180 rule. The camera crosses the 180 line. And the entire shot, reverse shot, doesn't work. It's shit. It's shit. It's shit. That's filmmaking 101. I learned that when I was like, when in like seventh grade, when we were making stupid movies in your backyard. How do you not know your shot reverse shot guy? He messed up. Um, so that 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 was what clued me in that the director was a hack. Alex, I didn't know that you were such a esteemed uh, director when we made those movies. I know, right? I didn't know I was in the presence of the great uh, prodigy Alex Russo. I know. Let me. Let me just, let me look up this guy. Uh, his, he's got a Wikipedia link. Let's see what else he's directed. As director, he directed mostly Star Trek, some Hill Street Blues, uh, a bunch of crap. Not a bunch of crap. I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's lots of fine things here. But uh, let me, uh, uh, Corey Allen is his name. Corey Allen. Learn your, learn your 180 rule. Anyway. Well, he's dead, so. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, no. He died two days before his 76th birthday. So how do you feel now? I mean, it's a. I mean, it's a pretty basic rule of film. Well, he also directed Encounter at Fair po Far Point, so. Oh I mean, well, there we go. Okay. There we go. He also directed a couple <laughs> episodes of Deep Space Nine, which I found interesting. Maybe he got better. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be on the lookout for this guy. Anyway, yeah. So this episode was dry, and it did a very poor job in presenting um, uh, its fake concepts in a way that made it unclear what they were doing, and the director did not get good performances out of his actors except for Sir Patrick Stewart because he's amazing. Like the other the other actor who I thought was m maybe the worst thing ever was the Bjork guy. He was awful. The old dude? No, 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 the the young the younger assistant who didn't get burned to death with a laser. Okay. Um his name was Bjork. It wasn't really, it was Bjorn, but I call him Bjork because I'm stupid and I Why not? It, I think this Why not? stuff is funny. This is also the second uh what I think it's the second least watched episode. Is it really? Of season one. 
maybe the whole series. Uh, I would buy that because this show only gets better. So apparently, the the script was delivered to Alan one day before shooting. Interesting. Well, I guess I don't I don't know enough about TV production to know what the normal lead time is, but this this does I guess this 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 reads as a first draft, and I don't know how many edits this went through, but it, it reads as if someone had the semblance of some good ideas, like oh, you know, there's a new definition of life that we hadn't considered, and this time it's inorganic, and so it missed all of our organic things, and we have to rethink. Sort of the definition of life. Sort of the thing that's happened like six or seven times already in Star Trek. Um, which, not to say that they shouldn't continue to ask these questions. But it's like they just wrote out the base draft and say, Okay, so here it is. Now that we've got the main story intact, we need to go through and make it interesting. You know, raise some stakes. Uh, explain some, some, some... Give a little more background. Give a little more context. Make things interesting. And it's like they just skipped that step and just gave it directly to the director. So that was the thing that, um, that makes sense, what, what you're telling me now. There's another thing I want to hit on, which is this is also the least funny episode of Star Trek ever, as far as their intentions, because I don't think there was a single joke written in. In the past, we've had sort of Data, Duh, Data's got his fingers caught in the trap. <laughs> or, you know, ah, Picard let the guy get murdered on his ship. <laughs> like, we've had little jokes here and there throughout the show. There is nothing in the Picard this letting someone get murdered on the ship is no joke, Alex. Oh, but that was played as a joke. You don't remember that episode? No. Alex, future Alex, when you're in editing, let us know what episode that was. It was Lonely Among Us. It was the episode where the where the uh, two species were on board and Picard gets like possessed or something. Oh god, that was awful. Yeah. Anyway, um there was not a single joke in this episode. Except for the fact that, I mean, this is a joke to us because it's hilarious because it's so bad, was that the alien, the little inorganic things called us ugly bags of mostly water. It's like trying too hard for an insult. I can't even wrap my head around how no one said, all right, we're, if we're going to try to make play this straight, we got to do something a little less stupid. Not, um, you know, may, maybe malleable beings of mostly water or water-based thing or something other than ugly bag of water of mostly water mostly water it's i i can't even it's a science lesson to let people know that humans are made of you know a fair amount of water but not all water yeah i was literally gonna say 90 percent, but that's beer (laughs) and not humans but it could be humans. I don't know what humans, humans could are. be beer. Let's Google it. Up to 60% of the human is water. So Bud Light really is an ugly sack of mostly water. Well, it's not a sack because it's in a can. Or in a bottle. Or in a sack. You don't drink your Bud Light out of a sack? I don't drink Bud Light, period. Well, neither do I, but if I was to drink it. And there goes that sponsorship we're never going to have. Who cares? I don't care. I don't. We're going to sponsor it by a real beer. Not like I'm getting sponsored by a moose head either. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Flashback to that episode. I'll link that in the description. So yeah, this is this is overall. Oh, one last thing. This was the episode where Deanna, with, with the exception of the episode where Deanna Troy's mother uh, exists, uh, this is the episode where Deanna had the most to do. Did you find her useful or did you find her useless? I still find her useless. Fair enough. Fair she's enough. just describing. She's just describing what we already can visually see. Fair enough. And in the case of who was the captain, I would say Picard did captainly stuff. Cool. But I'm I'm gonna give the medal to Data because he went down the front lines and almost got zapped by that laser. Yeah, so a little bit reckless on his part. You think he would have at least told the rest of his crew that he was about to turn on a giant laser that could kill him, and then just smashing it. So who knows? But that's that. Well, that's what we like Data. Because he knows what's going on before everyone else does. So yeah, overall, I guess that those are our notes. Is that weird ideas that could have been interesting if they had explained them in an interesting or engaging way, but they didn't because the script reads like a first draft. The directing was bad. The directing was caused there to be bad performances, boring uh, cinematography and explanations, as well as a cardinal screenwriting uh, directing sin was broken. 
or caused. He did. He did a sin. He he sinned is what I'm attempting to say. But it had interesting ideas. It's a shame they didn't get explored well. I agree. We agree, and that's what this show's all about. Agreeing, I guess. Anyway, that's our episode. Join us next week when we're going to be discussing the episode Coming of Age. Oh, no. That doesn't sound encouraging. I think I remember this one. Oh, it's a Wesley episode. Ah, that makes sense with the name. Well, we're going to have to deal with that next week. And you listeners, you're going to have to deal with it with us. Otherwise, you won't be able to watch any other episode. But yes, that was this episode. Why? Is it an, is it an important episode? No, not at all. I was just trying to make it sound like... I, I was trying to trick them. To trap them. We can still trick them. Let's just let's just pretend I didn't say that. But don't edit it It is out. Halloween, so... Well, this is, is this Ooh. a trick or is it a treat? And it's certainly a good Ooh. episode. As the view, we don't know. As the viewer rolls his eyes because he's probably listening to this in, like, January. Yeah, that was, that was this episode. That was Home Soil. Got a little uh, bags of mostly water, and they're ugly. All right. We will see you next time. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. All that stuff is much appreciated, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Our Favorite Frontier is hosted by Alex Russo and Nick Caledona, edited by Alex Russo and produced by Nerdy Inc. Be sure to follow us on YouTube to catch all of our videos, as well as like us on Facebook, Twitter, and whatever other social media we have.